going on there guys it's mystery 85 and i'm here with a little vlog for a moment so i wanted to talk about the 2004 mercury marauder and some of the journey that we've done of course you know we're putting a supercharger in the car and that supercharger installation has been slow between work uh, travel and some other things that i've got going that i'll be revealing to you guys pretty soon but we're making a lot of progress especially working on three vehicles at the same time so as you know we took a bone stock mercury marauder 2004 dtr vehicle of course and we went straight to e85 with a tune only i did some tune development over the course of that time and that tune development has actually been quite successful so with that tune development being complete especially for different modifications such as injectors and fuel pumps and uh, even you know just different things for the transmission as well we went ahead and I, I took some data logs of course of everything overall in the vehicle so injectors the fuel system both at the fuel pump the fuel filters if it's an OEM Ford fuel filter as well as the fuel lines can tolerate ethanol E85 we've been running E85 in stock fuel systems for well over 10 years almost going on 11 years because of course the pandemic took away some of the timing understanding you know the basically the scale of time it was hard to keep up with so in the Mercury Marauder the injectors are 24 pound injectors as with typical any 4.6 uh, four valve engine a dual overhead cam as well as the fuel pump which in this case it's not like the Mustangs in these systems they have a variable speed returnless fuel pump and that fuel pump looks to be a hundred ninety liter per hour fuel pump and of course with the power output that the E85 and the tune together made bone stock from air filter to exhaust tip they cause a high injector duty cycle and a high fuel pump duty cycle as well and that was logged continuously. Of course, as you know, I built a custom fuel pump driver module for the purpose of putting the Walbro 450 fuel pump in just to give a little more headroom and current and more efficient fuel uh, pump power delivery to that fuel pump. And this is in lieu of the wiring upgrade because I didn't do the wiring upgrade on this setup when I did it. And I will do a wiring upgrade later, even though it's not really needed, but we could do it anyway. So the only problem that the fuel system would have in this case is the higher output of the E85, which you saw we got between an SAE and the standard number. We we're almost, we we're still in the 300 foot-pound torque range on the vehicle, and that's very good for just the fuel modification only with no engine modification. Um, of course, we transitioned E85 because the entire fleet uses E85. The 97 Cobra did, the 98 Cobra does, and the 2004, of course, the Marauder does. And eventually the EcoBoost will as well once we do some different things to run that on it. So, overall, everything here runs on E85. The prices are better, the power output is better, and the engine runs phenomenally much more clean than it ever did on gasoline. Of course, there are a lot of myths out there about the fuel system and what it's made to tolerate. And while the fuel system isn't officially rated for that content of ethanol, that content of ethanol does nothing bad to the fuel lines. And I have proof of that. And it does nothing bad to the engine itself, which we have multitude of engine oil samples that prove that. So there are a lot of different things out there. And of course, we're preparing for the supercharger. So the car is getting the LU. 53 injectors, uh, 53 pound injectors running at a 60 PSI base fuel pressure at 450, uh, the Walbro 450. So once we get all that stuff set up completely, then the supercharger will go on. We're going with a 3.33 pulley and we're going with the Gates green belt. I just have to get some welding done on the oil pan so that I can actually install the oil um, fitting, the oil return fitting. And once we do that, the vehicle will be uh, ready to tune again for the uh, supercharger. And I'll be using a VMP mass airflow sensor, which the VMP mass airflow sensor is actually directly out of my 97 Cobra. And I'll be using it there since I will actually need a larger sensor to uh, run the 97 Cobra once we get all that said and done, which that's going to be expedited very soon as well. And I will be doing some video updates on that. So I just wanted to dispel some of the myths out there, of course, about ethanol and E85. And I just wanted to be sure that people understood that there are absolutely no problems with this vehicle. But those were two concerns that I did have. And of course, while I've run the car like that for two years, 
Um, I don't feel like there would be any problems. Duty cycles were very high though because of the power output and the additional fuel used and that's something that has to be corrected. The fuel economy has been phenomenal especially with all the, the emission systems and everything working properly on the car. So with a lot of that being done I have seen as high as 23 miles to the gallon and that's of course doing 60, 65 mile an hour range. If we're doing 70 miles an hour, we're seeing about 20 to 21 miles per gallon on a steady state, and this is compensating for both hilly terrain in regions as well as flat terrain in regions, because as you know, I drove this vehicle cross country all the way to New York City, and I also drove this vehicle all the way to New Mexico as well as just basically using it as a daily driver. So this vehicle has seen all types of terrains, altitudes, temperatures, and environmental climates, and ethanol has never failed it. Uh, the tune that I have in there, I have that tune written to compensate for the variance in ethanol content, and that tune can vary for ethanol content anywhere from 70% ethanol all the way to 85% ethanol, which is standard, and I've seen it also compensate as low as 55-60% to 60 ethanol content. So this vehicle, no matter what, is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and this vehicle is running phenomenally, and the engine is just as quiet as can be. We're at over 125,000 miles on the vehicle now, and we started running E85 at around 90,000 miles very shortly after I got the uh, vehicle in my possession, because I wasn't going to waste time or money on 93 octane when I could be running E85, and I have a whole fleet that runs E85. So with that said, everything has been efficient, and this is a blog on the road because I'm, I'm out here, we've got some downtime here, taking a break, doing a lunch, and I figured I just wanted to put this out there because there were a lot of lies, and there's also a lot of slander when it comes to the E85 and what it'll do, and most of it comes from ignorance because no one is out there doing what I'm doing with E85 or any of these vehicles so of course they're not going to understand they're only going to mostly know what they've read and there are experiences out there that can be negative but those are generally not a result of the fuel they're a result of mistuning they're a result of dirty fuel not the fact that it is a certain type of fuel or some other type of dirty system or different things like that uh, we've done a lot of other side experiments and projects with ethanol as well and those projects of course we've spoken about in the past especially if you're a new viewer uh, so all in all I'm glad that you guys joined me here today and I hope you were able to stay through the entire video and don't forget to smash that like button to subscribe and click the bell for notifications uh, I just want to make sure that we have an understanding of what's being done out here with the cars so that we can hey everybody can make power and you can run clean at the same time and have a good engine I will be doing some deeper teardowns into the Marauders engine and the oil samples come back phenomenal. They look far better than gasoline vehicle uh, four valve motors have come out because the load on the engine is a lot less uh, when it comes to using the proper oil and using a fuel that doesn't cause a lot of contamination in said oil. Of course the oil still comes out the engine looking just as red as these lights behind me and that tells me that I'm not getting soot in my oil that makes that oil last a lot longer of course given the shear and the like volatility of it but uh, of course it's Penn's Oil Platinum or Ultra I have a 6700 mile sample that I am sending out and I'm gonna send that oil sample out and hopefully I'll have that soon it's just between work and different life things and what we've got coming up I haven't had time to submit that one but I did just do that oil change so I'll have that one back soon enough and we can keep track of the um, wear on this bone stock engine before we put the Vortec V7JT trim on it and when we put that Vortec on this engine we're gonna see a lot more power a lot more performance and I do have a target of course at cruise to maintain basically the same fuel economy and that will take some work and fuel economy may most likely diminish somewhat but not add any effect to performance as usual all it takes is a little tenacity and you can do anything that you put your mind to uh, a general shop in most places don't put this type of time into a tune or the car and over the course of time I've gone for attempting perfection out of this in this little trade that I do it's mostly for fun but I also like 
like to inform everybody about what I'm doing. So that's why I do it. So, hey, I'm glad and appreciate all you guys that have liked, subscribed, and more. Don't forget to hit the Instagram as well. And once again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Thanks a lot, guys.